I am blessed and thankful that you've joined me and the others that are participating in today's pre-recorded worship service. I'm the Reverend Carrie Stover in ministry with those that experience where the spirit soars and the heart finds a home here at Maple Grove United in Oakville, Ontario. Now, after watching this pre-recorded worship service, I invite you to send it on to family or friends so that they can experience where the Spirit soars as well. I also invite you to make a comment on the Maple Grove website to acknowledge the many people that have been involved in making all of this possible. Sheila Rowland and Crystal Monkey for the beautiful chancel decorations. Dr. Deborah Henry, our music director, and Aaron Rosen, our accompanist, the accompanist for the chancel choir and an accomplished pianist. And of course, our chancel choir, who will be accompanied by Pat McKee on guitar and Patty Wanless on the jambe. Thanks to our scripture reader, Liz Bryant, and for Joan Vinyl Cox, who will lead in our call to worship, our opening prayer, and the prayer of confession. Many thanks as well to Joan, J.C. Barabe, and Al Weeble for the technical capabilities that bring this pre-recorded worship service to you. We will be celebrating the Lord's Supper, or communion as some people know it as, during the service. That's why this setup is here. So if you need to pause now to have your cookie and tea, or maybe it's a cracker and juice, please do so now. Now, NCN is looking for help with dental care. So if you have toothbrushes or um, dental floss or toothpaste that you can spare, you can drop it off at the church. A number of people have. Or you can ca contact Gay Loveland or Jean Ann Davis to uh, ask them about how you can help in that uh, area as well. They would appreciate that. Now, in light of the news from Kamloops, British Columbia, last week, I strongly encourage you to join the book discussion that's taking place Monday night, June the 7th at 7.30 p.m. This book is what we're going to be discussing, but if you don't have this book, that's okay. It would be good for you to be in this opportunity as we join together through Zoom to find out about the 21 things we may not know about the Indian Act. Contact uh, Katie Joachim or Sandra Onyafrik for this thought-provoking discussion and what it says about our past, present, and future with the Indigenous peoples of Canada. You can see the e-news that came out this past Wednesday for uh, further details. Now, you may also be wondering what some of the decorations are here on this table in front of me. This is the communion setup that I will be using, the candle that I light for the Christ light in our lives. And for everything else, the stuffed animals that are at the base of the table and here, it's to recognize our indigenous sisters and brothers. And what it means is that we can start to live out our obligations under the 94 calls to action from the Truth and Reconciliation Report and the apology that the United Church of Canada you know, uh, gave to the Indigenous peoples in 1986. It was only mistreated. Um, it was only received by the Indigenous peoples. That apology was for the mistreatment of the indigenous peoples uh, that were mistreated by colonization by the settlers of this land, those that came from Europe. Now, as I said, the, the First Nations Council did not accept the apology because they wanted to see how the United Church of Canada would live out what they said in that apology. In 1998... Many, what's that, 13 years later, or 12 years later, the United Church of Canada offered an, an apology for the involvement as they operated several of the residential schools. It was accepted by the Indigenous Council at that time. 
And then just a few years ago, well, almost 10 years ago, in, uh, at the 41st General Council of our United Church of Canada, it was in August of that year that the United Church decided to adapt the colors of the medicine wheel into the crest of the United Church. You may not be able to see the pin that I'm wearing in my jacket lapel. The colors representing, in many ways, the four winds, north, south, east, and west, and many other parts of it as well. But it reflects the respect for diversity and interdependence it re also represents the four stages of life and the four seasons. The crest that I'm wearing, although you don't see it right now, also included the addition of the Mohawk phrase, Agwe na de de na ne ren, which means all my relations. And the children's sandals and the moccasins, the teddy bears are in remembrance of the children who never returned home from the residential schools to their families. And the orange fabric that is placed here around this candle is to remind us of the atrocities that happened in the residential schools. And I light this candle to remember all those that never returned home. Then their names were changed to Western names and may never have been recorded and were in many unmarked graves at the residential schools. It's a sad time in the history of Canada. The indigenous peoples, their families weep. We weep. God weeps. Let us observe a time of silence as I sing God weeps from more voices for those who died in the residential school but who are united with the great spirit.
let us work toward understanding and, rec and reconciliation with our indigenous brothers and sisters as we are called by Jesus the Christ. I invite you to listen to Aaron as he plays the prelude by Friedrich Chopin, the prelude in C minor. As difficult as the news is about the residential schools, I invite you to welcome the light of Christ into your homes. The light from this candle burns brightly to remind us that we are connected by faith, by love, and by his presence in our lives during the good times in even those times that are difficult. I invite Joan Vinyl Cox now to lead in the call to worship and the opening prayer, and then she will lead us all in a prayer of confession. We gather in God's name, wherever we are, to offer our praise and wonder. We gather on this day to be kept holy in mind, body, and spirit. We gather to remember a painful history of our indigenous sisters and brothers and an inspired journey of our congregation and of the United Church of Canada. We come seeking your healing and grace as the body of Christ. We come to give thanks, to confess, to love, to be loved, and to be a church in the world that is an instrument of healing, justice, hope, and reconciliation. We come once again to dedicate ourselves and our lives to the one who created us, the one who calls us, the one who sustains us, and the one who guides us in the way of love. Let us worship our creator with one mind and one heart, as sisters and brothers in peace. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the life you have given us and all the experiences that shape us. We give you praise for the love in our lives and the breath in our bodies. We give you thanks for the son you sent and for the path he made to follow. We give you praise for your wondrous creation and how it sustains us. God of the kingdom, send your Holy Spirit upon us. 
And now join with me as we say in unison our prayer of confession as it is displayed on your screen. Loving God, we know we have failed you as you entrusted us with knowledge of the injustices against indigenous peoples, injustices against many others in society and even ourselves. Help us as we repent of the past and go forward in solidarity and be empowered by your love. You entrusted us with knowledge of wounds around us and in your world that need healing. Help us with our inequities as we minister to all in your name, as we humbly repent and then affirm your goodness and grace in, in the world through our thoughts, our words, and our deeds. God of hope, you entrusted us with knowledge of justice. Help us as we seek it in the name of peace and love. We ask this through the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. A Christian named Teresa from a villa in Spain said something like, Christ has no body now except yours. No hands, no feet on earth except yours. Your senses are the senses through which he experiences the world with love. Your path is the path with which he journeys to do good. Your touch is the touch through which he blesses all the world. We are his body. Christ has no body now on earth except yours. So let us go. However we can learn, let's learn. However we can heal, let's heal. However we can be hope, let's be hope in his name and in love for all. God calls us today, as in all days, to continue our journeys of discovery and reconciliation. Let us raise our voices in song as we give thanks for the wondrous world that God has created and for us and for our nation, for all. Let us now join in singing, This is God's Wondrous World. And the words will be displayed on your screen.
The reading today is from Mark, chapter 3, verse 20 to 35. Then he went home, and the crowd came together again, so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons, he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, the house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. But his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed, the house can be plundered. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent him and sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brother and sisters are outside. They're asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. For the word of God among us, thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy and triune God, be with us to experience your word deep within our souls and enable us to engage in and through that wisdom in all that we do. We ask this in the name of our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. I like to party as much as anyone else. Or should I actually say, I like to party, not just a party, but to party just as much as the next person does. 
And it's wonderful to celebrate the milestones in our lives. You know, birthdays, anniversaries, special days that mark where we've come from and hopefully point to the bright and blessed future. Today, I recognize the 62nd anniversary of our congregation or community of faith, Maple Grove United Church. You might recognize the banner that's behind me. From those first meetings, establishing the plans for the building, the families that contributed and worked hard to bring about the original building, we give thanks. Thank you to the originating members and all of you that have found your faith family or friends here at Maple Grove United Church. Over the years, memories have been made, special t days have been shared, celebrated in many people's lives, and many of you have gathered to give God thanks and praise, and to lift your voices in song, a song like what the chancel choir just sang. You are my all in all. Well done, good and faithful servants of the one who called you and you have followed. Now that is what now what Jesus was doing in the reading that Liz Bryant did from, uh, for us from the Gospel of Mark. Here we find the scribes and Pharisees are opposing Jesus. Jesus has been very busy in this early part of Mark. Just before this, if you backed up a little bit in the gospel, you'd find that he gathered together his disciples, those first disciples. But the scribes and, and Pharisees don't like what they're hearing or seeing. And so they're proclaiming that he must have Belzebel, or as some of us would have known in our, in our Sunday school days, Belzebub. It's a Satan-like person possessing him taking over him. They're creating false statements about Jesus. It's like the first century fake news. Now, it would be a time that no one would want to celebrate, and that's why his family members are alerted and come to see him, to find out what is happening. It would definitely be, well, if you were filled with with some, something that possessed you. It'd be like going to a party or a celebration where that one person carries out in front of everyone else and you sometimes think that that person is possessed even when they aren't. They might just be showing off, although that's not the case for Jesus. Now, Jesus refutes the naysayers with parables and then starts into the lesson on blasphemers and what it means to blaspheme. That's seeking repentance. Repentance that each of us did during our prayer of confession and preparing us to approach the communion table to receive the bread of life and the cup of love. Now also for an anniversary, not only is it the 62nd anniversary of the Maple Grove United Church, and we give God thanks for that. But it's also the 96th anniversary, actually, of the United Church of Canada, which occurs just in a few days on June the 10th. We will join together just as we are today as sisters and brothers and family in His name. There's actually a service going to be online. I think it happens at about 7 p.m. on June the 10th. You might have to look through Facebook if you have that to see it live streamed. We remember and we celebrate from the very early days of this united church, of what is still the first of its kind, of uniting different denominations in His name, to live out God's true calling, to serve the great nation and the world through many of of the overseas relief and mission and service initiatives, and then to serve locally. We at Maple Grove have answered the call over years and continue to support Kerr Street Mission and the Neighborhood Care Network, to name just a few. We're involved with climate and environmental issues and assisting refugees' families. Those are just a few more of the actions that you've been involved in 
over the years. You've helped each other in times of trouble. But on some point during June the 10th, I invite you to pause. Just pause. Make a little note, maybe on a scratch piece of paper that you have with you right now, to just give thanks for our united and uniting United Church of Canada and for the accomplishments that we have made in his name. We celebrate being called together as sisters and brother, as a family in Christ, to love each other as Jesus commanded us, and to love others. Today, though, I also recognize that it's the 35th anniversary of the first apology of the United Church of Canada to the indigenous peoples for the white settlers that came to this nation and marginalized and oppressed the people of this land in order to make it their way, the way of European traditions. The apology, as I said early at the beginning of the service, was received but not accepted by the indigenous leaders because they wanted really to see how the United Church would live out, live through that apology. Now, I think that sounds awfully familiar with our federal government in the 94 calls to action that Prime Minister Justin Trudeau promised would be a priority in 2016. We look now at the residential schools issue, issues, and we can apologize and say it will never happen again. We know that the residential schools are no longer in place. The last one closed in 1996. But we need to acknowledge through education that we know what took place and to take the action to make sure that those sections of the 94 calls to action are actually worked on by the various denominations across Canada. There were specific actions for those denominations that were, re were involved with the residential schools. And yes, we are included. And the person that says, well, it was nothing to do with me, is actually wrong. Because we carry the burdens and history of our biological families, as we do through our family trees. But we also carry the troubles of our church's history, even though we weren't involved. We are also called to celebrate, to celebrate that we are the beloved children the family members, all of us, together in his name. Last week, it was, uh, Pen uh, no, it wasn't Pentecost Sunday. It was a time we came together, and when I talked about, you know, our new creed of the United Church, I ended my short message that we all read the new creed together. And the, the section that resonated with me this week while thinking of the news from the former residential school in Kamloops, British Columbia, are these words. We are called to be the church. The church that Jesus calls his sisters and brothers, his family. We're called to celebrate God's presence in all lives, all ways, to live with respect in creation. Those like us, and even those that are not like us in any way. We're called to love and serve others as he commanded. We're called to seek justice and resist evil. To say what is wrong when it's marginalizing and oppressing people from being their true selves. We're called to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen. risen. That is who we are as followers of Jesus. That's what we will recognize in a few moments during our celebration of communion. We are also called to recognize that he will be our judge and is our hope. Our judgment will come one day. But there is hope. There is always hope in His redeeming love. It's been a difficult week. 
to prepare to celebrate this congregation's 62nd anniversary and the 96th anniversary of the United Church of Canada, and also to realize that there's been 35 years since the first apology was extended to the indigenous peoples from our United Church of Canada. As I said earlier, yes, I like a celebration and a party. However, I think we have much work to do to truly live as sisters and brothers in Christ. We can celebrate our past while we're moving forward to make right the ways that, albeit we're never under our control, or even anything to do with us. You probably say, well, how do we do with this? Well, as followers of Jesus, just like we've done in the past, we are called always to make right the wrongful ways on our journey. And we can do that by making sure that we stay informed and educate ourselves on the 94 calls to action of which some we can influence in our United Church of Canada and even perhaps influence our federal government. One of the key educational pieces is tomorrow, Monday night at 7.30 through Zoom, to hear about the 21 things we may not know about the Indian Act and how doing away with that piece of legislation and its modifications over the years, and if we can do away with that over time, how that will make us a better Canada. If you need information, contact Katie Joachim or Sandra Onyafrik. The information was in the e-news of this past Wednesday. And join with us tomorrow night at 7.30 via, uh, via Zoom. It will be thought-provoking. You don't need the book if you just want to come and listen and participate in the discussion. But we can also help our indigenous sisters and brothers and many others in our society that have been wronged by colonization. We can do that by writing or speaking to our MP for Oakville, the Right Honorable Anita Arnand, Anand, and even our local MPPs. We need to ask both levels of government to step up and fulfill their promises, promises that were spoken and little action that has been completed. How would we feel if we could not turn on the tap and drink that water that came out of it? Some reserves have had the problem for over 25 years. I don't think we would put up with it. It takes all of us to get involved and reach out and help our sisters and brothers in Christ, no matter what their culture or ancestry that they came from. It's up to us to make sure that our elected officials make good on their promises as those that before them did not, such as Egerton Ryerson, and Mr. McDonald, and the other many others of that generation that wanted to eradicate the indigenous population in Canada. Now we can celebrate, and we can do that by joining together to give thanks for where we've come from and where we're going. But it means all of us going together, not just a select group of people. We can celebrate because we love and serve all sisters and brothers in Christ. It can be a very happy, happy anniversary only if we can all celebrate in the loving grace of God or for our indigenous brothers and sisters with the great spirit from whom all blessings flow. As the Gospel of Mark says, whoever does the will of God, that love for you and for me and for each other, Mark says, is my brother and sister and mother. Let us share. Let us celebrate our history as Maple Grove United Church 
as we keep the memories alive and continue to do the work of Jesus the Christ who calls us to follow, we keep the memories alive of this wonderful congregation, the work that you've done in the past by living and loving in his name. I invite you to join me in prayer, the prayers that unite our hearts for those that are near to us and far. Let us pray. God of all creation, we offer you our prayers for ourselves and for those near to us or far, and for all creation, for the creatures of the sea, for the birds of the air, and for all that lives on the land or in it. And we give you thanks. We recognize that your creation is hurting. Help us, we pray, to be transformers, healers, people who change the world for the health and well-being of all your creation, for all your creatures, from the smallest to the largest. Help us to understand that we are one part of your creation and that your love fills the spaces, connecting us all. Help us to live together, renewed by your love. We lift up those that are suffering at this time, whether they're oppressed, marginalized, anxious for staying at home, those that have a physical, emotional, or mental problem. May your comfort and hope fill their hearts. As we've gathered for the anniversary of Maple Grove United, we remember all those that were once part of this community of faith and are no longer with us. Let your perpetual light shine upon them and may they continually rest in your peace and comfort. As followers of Jesus, as people led by the Holy Spirit, as people loved by the Creator, we pray the powerful words that Jesus taught us. Our Creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome at this table, and I hope at your table as well in your homes. And we come together now for communion. The United Church of Canada does not exclude anyone from the table, from this wonderful gift that has been given to us, the followers of the way, the truth, and the life. We come to this table not as individuals, but as a community, a community surrounded by his love, by sharing the bread and the juice, your tea or cracker, Jesus the Christ makes us one with him and with each other. Let us enter into our time of remembering the greatest gift that has been given to us. We will say responsively, as displayed on your screen, I say, God be with you, and also with you. Let us lift up our hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to God. We give our thanks and praise. We continue to say responsively, creator and giver of all life, a source of love, we bless you for all your gifts. We you brought creation to birth and sent prophets 
to waken us from the great dream, a dream in which everyone is treated with dignity and love, justice and mercy, honor and hospitality. We praise you for elders and prophets, visionaries and leaders, teachers and preachers, all who have shared the truth of your love. We praise you for our brother Jesus, love in human form, who showed us in womb and tomb, in cradle and cross, in tenderness and compassion, your great heart of love. And join together with me in these words that join the heavens to the earth when we say them. Holy, holy, holy God of peace and love, heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. Hosanna in the highest. Friends, we gather here at his invitation to break bread and share the cup and to proclaim the great mystery of our faith. And we all say, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. On the night that Christ died for us, he took bread He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, connecting each of them to the bread, to each other. And he said to them, This is my body, which is given for you. When you break it and you eat it, do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, He poured it for all to share. He gave thanks. And then he gave it to his disciples, inviting them to be one with him. And he said to them, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood in the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of of our brokenness, your brokenness. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Creator God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and of beverage. Make this cup of love and this bread of new life to renew us by his love. Unite us at this feet and may it strengthen us to live the resurrected and reconciled life of Christ with all of creation. Through, with, and in Jesus, united by love by the Holy Spirit, we offer all glory to you, creator, source of love, now and always. Amen. As you are following with me from your homes, please say what is displayed on your screen with me. First, we'll take the bread, and as Jesus on that night of his arrest took the bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is the new covenant sealed in my blood. Whenever you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. Every time we eat this bread or your cracker or whatever you have at home and you drink from the cup that you have prepared, we proclaim the birth, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ until he comes again. All things are now prepared. Let us say together, let us eat and drink together for our strengthening in the faith and for the sake of the world. 
Now, as you share the bread at home, even if it's by yourself, as I will do here, say the body of Christ given for you. And either before or after you consume it, you would say amen. And we'll do the same with the cup. You'll say the cup of love, love, the, co- the new covenant given for you. And as you receive it or drink it or just after, we say amen. As we partake at home, and as what I will do at this part in the video, there will be music that is played. The body of Christ. As we have been refreshed with the bread of life and the cup of love, I invite you now to say responsibly responsibly with me as it appears on your screen, the prayer after communion. Life-giving God, may we who shared Christ's body live his risen life. May we who drank his cup bring new life to others. May we who receive the Spirit and are entrusted with the message of reconciliation live love to the world. Keep our hearts firm in the hope you have set before us as you did for those that came before us so that we and all your children shall be free and all creation will praise your name. In his powerful name and presence we pray. Amen. I know it's been a difficult time for many of you during this pandemic and these stay-at-home orders, and we long to be back together as a faith community here in the sanctuary. There is hope. There is hope for all of us as the light burns brightly from this candle. It shines for each of us. Let us embrace that hope as we go from our time together. And before we leave this time, let us join our voices together in singing our ascending hymn, I'm going to live so God can use me. From Voices United, number 575. And the words will be displayed on your screen.
benediction I'm using today I've adopted from the United Church of Canada's 96th anniversary service, which will be on Facebook or live streamed out there somewhere on maybe the United Church's YouTube channel on June the 12th. So friends, as we go from this place, remember that 62 years of life, 62 years of ministry, 62 years of possibility, 62 years of story, 62 years of family, friends, and neighbors, and 62 years that are part of the 2,000 years gone by. People of God know this, that in the coming year, In the coming decade, in the coming century, in the coming millennium, we will continue to be Jesus' people, living out his call. And we don't know where any of that will take us. And we don't know what it will look like. But we do know this. We will never be alone on this journey. God is with us. All ways and always. Now may the blessing of Christ hold us and the love of the Creator enfold us. And the wings of the Spirit carry us, carry all creation in our United Church of Canada and us at Maple Grove United, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to listen to Go Now in Peace, as recorded by the Chancel Choir, accompanied by Pat McKee on guitar and Ron McKee on trumpet, of course, under the direction of Dr. Deborah Henry and Aaron Rosen. And after that, the postlude that Aaron will play is Edvard Grieg's In Spring. Many blessings on your week and on your journey ahead. Thank you.